This video presentation is intended to give you an overview of an approach to problem solving and solution building called Kepner Trigo. This approach is documented in the book called The Rational Manager, written by Charles Kepner and Benjamin Trago. If you would like more information, there are uh, books that are available online. There are also books available in different libraries that you can look at and, uh, and check out. I'm Mike Allenbaugh, the, and I will be the presenter for this program. I've used Kepner Trago in a number of different ways over the years uh, to help facilitate teams that are working on, on different projects. And I've worked, I, I've used this actually in a variety of different ways, not just in, in team environments, but even just day-to-day -day types of problems that come up. This is very helpful. Its main claim to fame though, is that it's really good about situational analysis. So times where you're approaching ambiguous, ambiguous situations, this particular approach is very, very helpful at sifting through the fog and finding the, the substance. I call that a signal to noise ratio, and that's fairly common in Six Sigma circles. So concentrating and, and getting focused on what the problem truly is and letting the other stuff kind of hang out there until, until you have time to get around to it. So these authors, the, the authors of, of The Rational Manager, basically have a way of, of doing this through kind of a system of questions. And that's, that's not all. And what we are doing here today is just a very small piece of the overall body of knowledge for Kepner Trago. The approach, as I said, focuses a lot on situational appraisal. It also does a lot to help characterize problems, and we'll, we will get to that here in just a minute. But there is also a solution building piece of this that involves potential problem analysis and decision analysis and, and so on and so forth. We're not really gonna have time to get into that in this session. This session is just intended to kind of give you a feel for how this works. So there are four phases of the Kepner Trago system. You see those down here, situational analysis, problem analysis, potential problem analysis, or opportunity analysis, and then decision analysis. And this is just another, gra this is just a graphical representation here. You can kind of read through the questions that are in each of these phases here as I talk. But the gist of this is you start at one level, you start at like an 80,000 foot level and you go through this cycle. And then with each iteration that you go through, you come down to a more specific level. And then you go through it again and you bring it down further and then you bring it down further until you know you are really sure and focused on what you believe to be the true problem which in many environments and and in some other methodologies getting your hands around what is truly the problem is sometimes a problem in itself sometimes you get into team efforts where if you ask five people about what the problem is, they'll give you 10 different answers. And because of that, you get a lot of noise in, involved here. And it's hard for you to really focus on what truly is the problem. So let's start with this. First off, remember this, TCC, and is versus is not, all right? So T, the T part of this is, tell me about whatever, you know, tell me about this problem. At this point, we are just talking about situational analysis. You're just trying to get your hands around this situation and trying to understand what's going on. So the T of this begins with, 
tell me about this problem, whatever that problem may be. Step two, clarify. This is still in the situational analysis phase, but before you move on to asking specifics about the problem, there are things that need to be clarified so that you know you're on the right page here. We'll get to that in a minute. And then the last C here is characterize. And characterize deals specifically with problem analysis. So now you're shifting away from situational analysis and you're looking at problems. You're looking at, and, and there probably is more than one problem because there usually is. But this is where the rubber hits the road in terms of, of problem analysis. So TCC, tell me, clarify, characterize. Now this is not really in the rational manager in this form. This is something that I've structured to help people understand this a little bit better because there's a lot of questions. There are a lot of questions in this and it can just seem like I'm bombarding you with questions. This helps organize that so it makes sense, okay? When you get into the characterization phase and the problem analysis phase, so you're trying to characterize the problem. This is the is and is not. Okay, notice there it says is, is not, and then it says what, where, when, and how. So you're gonna go through a series of is and is not questions for each of these aspects. What happened, you know, what is happening, what is not happening, where is it happening, where is it not happening, okay? You got the idea? You're gonna do the same for does and does not. What, where, when, and how. Then you will do the same thing for has and has not, what, where, when, and how, okay? So why do you want to do this? Why is this part so important? Here we go, we'll, we'll get into this now. Oh, before we do that, at the end of this, after you've gone through the situation uh, analysis and you've clarified the situation, you've characterized the problem aptly in, in, in a strong fashion, at the end of each of these sections, you need to provide evidence that supports how you know what you know, because you do not want to make assumptions. So there is also a step in here for assumption testing. This is a very powerful way to go through situational and problem analysis because of those things right there at the very end. So in situation appraisal, you want to separate and you want to clarify the concerns, but you want to start with, tell me about this problem, right? We, we talked about that. Well, this is the what, where, when, and how. So this is part of that. You're still going to ask questions in the situation appraisal, like, what do we mean by this? Okay, so when you ask someone to Tell me about the problem. Tell me about what you're seeing. Tell me about what you know. And again, five different people, five different answers. A way to get your, a way to kind of distill that and filter that is to ask these questions. What do you mean by, what do we mean by whatever it is? What exactly is fill in the blank? What else concerns us about what we know? Okay, now you, you, someone's told you what they know. Now you need to be asking, what else concerns me about this, about what I know? What else concerns that person that you're talking to about what they've told you? What evidence do you have to support your story? And what different deviations, decisions, or plans are part of this concern? So now let's talk about deviations because that's very important. A deviation, and I will move the video window over here, um, basically is the difference between should be and is. And what you have here is a graphical representation of that. So should be is here, is is here, in between should be and is, is the problem. Anything that is outside of should be and is goes to the parking lot. That is not part of the problem. It doesn't mean it's not important. It just means that is not the problem that you're focused on at that point in time. So get to it later, 
Keep it in mind, whatever you have to do, but stay focused on the problem. So this, this is characterizing, this is step number one in characterizing the problem. So now you're kind of getting away from situations and into the specific problem. And I'll go back to this. If you've ever had to write a problem statement before for like a Six Sigma project or whatever the case may be, sometimes people want to stick in their favorite thing or add to the problem statement, you know, just because they think something's important. This is an excellent way of bounding that so that people don't get that opportunity to do that. Because why? You're focused only on should be and is, right? Anything that is in addition to this, that is outside those bounds, is out of bounds, and it waits until later. This helps you write a very clear and concise problem statement. So, problem analysis starting with what? Remember what, where, when, and how? This is what. What, is the, what has the deviation? What does not have the deviation? What is the specific deviation? What is not? The deviation. What is similar, uh, what similar objects rather could have the deviation but do not? What other deviations could be reason, reasonably observed but are not? What evidence do you have to back all of that up? Okay. Gone through each of these questions, you've answered them. Prove it. How do you know what you know? Where is this happening? Where is it not happening? Where is the object when the deviation is observed? Where is the deviation on the object? So maybe it's on the bottom right-hand corner of whatever the object is. That means the rest of the object does not have this devi deviation. Now, when we're talking about objects here, if you're not working with a product, this still applies. So in other words, if you're in, this, in a service organization and there is a process issue that keeps disconnecting things. You keep losing things. You, your quotes aren't right or some, whatever the case may be. These questions are still legitimate. Substitute object for something else. Okay. Where, where is the deviation in the process? You know, that's, that's what you're looking for. When you're asking where, now you're looking for the point of origin. Where did this problem originally happen you know the where where is this and you know, instead of object let's say where is the problem when the deviation occurs where is that that happening where else could the object be when the deviation is is observed but is not okay where could this be happening but it's not happening whatever it is where else could the deviation be located but it's not how do we know this? Is it evident? Is there evidence? Or is this just hearsay? Do you have data? Or are you relying on somebody else's story? So when does this happen? Here's a whole bunch of questions for when, right? So we go, we go through the same thing here. When is it happening? When is it not happening? When was the deviation observed the first time? When since that time has the deviation been observed? When in the object's history or life cycle was the deviation observed first? And so on and so forth. So now you're into when. You've covered what, now you're in, into when. Remember down here at the bottom, after you get through this cycle of questions, test your assumptions. What evidence do you have that proves this to be the case? In addition, you want to do a little bit, and we didn't get to how. We didn't get, get to that. For some reason, I didn't have a how, how slide in here, so I, I apologize for that. But at any rate, now we're kind of moving on to assumption testing here. Still part of the problem analysis phase, but what you need to ask yourself is, what is different, odd, special, or unique about the is versus the is not state or problem? Okay, The is not a pro is probably not a problem, right? But the is is a problem. So what's different between the two? What was changed on, in, or around each occurrence, each distinction when this happened? What did 
uh, when did the, the change occur? How could each of these cause the deviation? Each of these changes cause the deviation. And how do we know that, right? How do we know that those could have caused the deviation? Is our logic sound? Test the possible causes against the is and is not specification. So if blank is the true cause of this failure, how does it explain both the is and is not condition? This is a good assumption tester right here, a good way of testing assumptions. And then when you go back through all of this, look at some of the assumptions that you think might be, might have been made along the way. Go back and look, go back and use this. You know, does it still stand true? Does, is the logic there? Is the proof there? Is the evidence, does the evidence support this? Which possible cause may uh, explain the is versus is not information? And which cause has the fewest, simplest, and most reasonable assumptions? So remember TCC and is, is not, because that's the foundation of the flow of this approach. First, tell me about it. Second, clarify the situation. Third, characterize the problem. And then you go into, in, in order to do that and characterize the problem, you go through your is, is not, your does, does not, your has, has not, in what, where, when, and how flow, all right? Always look at your evidence and test assumptions, okay? So that wraps it up for this session. I hope you find it informative, and I appreciate your time. If you have any questions or want more information, remember, The Rational Manager by Charles Kepner and Benjamin Trago. Again, thank you for your time.